Welcome. In this lecture, I will explain seismic base isolation and energy dissipation systems and how they help to improve building resilience, performance and economy. Traditionally, buildings are and were designed to mainly resist vertical gravity loads rather than horizontal loads. This means that buildings are typically poorly conditioned to resist horizontal shaking unless they have been earthquake engineered. Therefore, the idea of being able to isolate a building from horizontal shaking is an interesting strategy to reduce seismic damage. Base isolation enables this to be achieved. Conventionally, a house is fixed to the ground by its foundation, and when the ground shakes, the building must resist the sudden horizontal displacements. Cracks may appear and become larger, chimneys, gables and parapets may break. There may even be partial or whole building collapse. Imagine if a building were placed on a perfect, frictionless, horizontal sliding surface. In such a case, horizontal forces could not be transmitted to the building and therefore there would not be any building damage. Practical base isolation systems have to be incorporate some minimum horizontal resistance to prevent wind-induced movements and preferably some recentering capability to control permanent horizontal displacements. You will have noticed from the animation that the vast majority of deformations happen across the isolators. As a rule, base isolation reduces rather than eliminates horizontal seismic demands on structures. A base isolation system places the building on a horizontally flexible base. This means that the effective natural period of the system becomes longer. You will see that the accelerations and therefore forces are much lower at these longer periods. Base isolators also typically have higher levels of damping to reduce isolator displacements. Base isolators have to safely accommodate the large horizontal displacements, which can be up to one meter in high seismic zones. In the Groningen region, however, the likely displacements are in the range of 50 to 200 millimeters. Base isolation is very effective for buildings that have short periods of vibration, but it is not effective for long period structures, such as tall buildings. The first modern engineered seismic isolation systems emerged in the 1970s and the main types in current use are elastomeric and friction sliding based isolators. An example of a whole building isolation is the Taipei Performing Arts Center. In this case, base isolation reduced the expected seismic forces by about 60%, resulting in lower material consumption and simpler detailing. The building is also expected to have less damage after an earthquake compared to conventional construction methods. The Benicio Martinez Bridge in California on the right uses friction pendulum base isolators. The isolators sit between the reinforced concrete piers and the bridge deck. Because of the large relative horizontal displacements across a base isolator, it is necessary to supply flexible connectors to all pipework, cables and other such systems which cross the base isolator. The image you see shows flexible pipework connectors across an isolator plane. Elevators and stairs need special treatment. And where base isolation is at the foundation level, a gap needs to be provided around the building to prevent the building hitting the ground. Base isolation is one of the most effective means of protecting buildings from seismic damage and it could be argued that base isolation is similar to seat belts in cars. When needed, they help to protect people and in this case also protect property. But many other protective systems are available under the general heading of energy dissipation devices. These devices follow the philosophy that the seismic displacement demand on a structure is lower if its energy dissipation ability is higher. Therefore, high energy dissipation needs a lower displacement target which can be met more economically. You also have better control where damage is likely to occur. Friction devices, 
hysteretic devices, viscoelastic and viscous dampers are examples of energy dissipation devices. Hysteretic devices are intrinsically nonlinear and only dissipate energy when their yield force is exceeded. They rarely provide benefit at modest levels of shaking. Under high excitation, the energy dissipated will reduce peak responses, but structures incorporating hysteretic devices will generally experience some permanent deformation at the end of an earthquake. Hysteretic devices are elements with high energy dissipation and non-degrading hysteresis. They may need to be replaced after a significant earthquake. Energy dissipation systems are often embodied in braced frame structures. Use of an unbonded brace is shown. An unbonded brace is a buckling restrained steel element that provides stable energy dissipation through tension and compression yielding of the confined steel core of the brace. Viscous dampers can be installed in numerous arrangements such as damped outriggers. The dampers minimize wind-induced vibrations as well as seismic demands. Viscous dampers are mechanical devices like car shock absorbers, which provide resistance related to the relative velocity between their ends. They can dissipate energy even at very small movements and have the potential to keep a structure elastic and prevent permanent deformations. The seismic lateral stability system shown in this building makes use of viscous dampers and hysteretic dampers. As explained, viscous dampers are velocity dependent and work by forcing a fluid through a small hole. They are even effective at small movements whilst allowing a structure to freely accommodate temperature induced demands. In this example, the viscous dampers provide additional damping at all times and the unbonded braces act as an additional safety fuse for extreme events for which day two will provide further additional damping. Another feature that can be used in certain situations is a controlled amount of vertical uplift allowed at key column locations as seen at the base of the tower corner columns. This facilitates some vertical isolation which also helps to reduce seismic demands. In this lecture, you have been given an overview of the benefit of seismic base isolation and energy dissipating devices. These devices bring significant benefits to projects by providing enhanced performance and resilience to resist seismic loads. The hospital shown is newly designed and built using base isolators, and the historic building shown has been structurally upgraded using base isolation. The next lecture will discuss the conservation of national monuments and buildings of historic and cultural value that are deemed to be subjected to earthquakes. Thank you for your attention.